handling of the Las Vegas debate Politico. Chris Wallace did Fox Proud. AP worked hard to keep the final presidential debate substantive with tough questions. USA Today, Wallace put on a clinic on how to run a debate. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe well, v. Wade? You also voted against a ban on late-term partial birth abortions. Why? In a speech you gave to a Brazilian bank for which you were paid $225,000, we've learned from the WikiLeaks that you said this, and I want to quote, My dream is a hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. I sat down earlier with the host of Fox News Sunday. Chris Wallace, welcome. Good to be back. You could have started the debate with the hot cable news stories, nine women making accusations yep. against Donald Trump, WikiLeaks disclosures against Hillary Clinton. You chose to start with the Supreme Court. You moved on to gun control and abortion. Why? I, it, absolutely consciously. I, I thought that this campaign and the previous debates had become so mired in all the muck, which those are legitimate issues. I knew I was going to have to discuss them, but I... I I felt hungry and I thought the country was hungry to discuss the issues that a president has to deal with after a campaign is over. Appointing Supreme Court justices, immigration, how you get the economy growing again. And so I very consciously decided, let's start with serious stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't want to spend the, the first 10 or 15 minutes talking about scandal. Well, it certainly set a substantive tone. When you asked what turned out to be the question of the debate, were you about whether Donald Trump would promise to abide by the election results? Yeah. Were you prepared for him to say he might not? Did you have a follow-up ready to go? Uh, I didn't have a follow-up ready to go, but I certainly was prepared for that possibility. Uh, you know, having covered Trump in this campaign for 15 months or whatever it is now, uh, there's nothing he can say or do that surprises me. Uh, so, look, it was an obvious question to ask. He had been saying for weeks that the uh, election was rigged. Uh, that oh, you was, had to ask it. Yes, it and that it was in the process of being stolen. And his campaign, his running mate, Mike Pence, had said on Sunday that Trump and he would absolutely respect the results of the election. But Trump hadn't said that, so it was an obvious question to ask. I will say, even though I was prepared for the possibility he would not, uh, you know, he would say he wouldn't respect it, I was still a little stunned, as I think the audience was at the moment, and that wasn't a prepared follow-up. That was just, this is a big moment. Here is a candidate. We're not talking about Gore and 500 votes in Florida. We're talking about a candidate weeks before the election saying, I'm not prepared to accept the results. I'm not committing to accept the results. And I wanted to put that in the historical context of saying, this is one of the tenets and the strengths of our democracy and you're willing to go against that, and it had a resonance. It seemed at times you were struggling to maintain control in Las Vegas, including your declaration that you were not a potted plant, and at other times you broke in. You interrupted Hillary Clinton when she was reciting the virtues of the Clinton Foundation and not answering your question uh, about uh, conflicts at the Family Foundation. So how did you make those judgments? How did it feel? Well, that was the, the real revelation to me, and I'll take you back behind the scenes a little bit. We had done run-throughs on Tuesday and Wednesday before the Wednesday night debate, with a couple of students, uh, a young woman as Hillary Clinton, a man as a uh, young man, a student as Trump. And one of the questions in the, on Tuesday was favorite pizza. Uh, one of the questions on Wednesday was favorite movie. But the point was, and they had clearly been instructed to come at me, to interrupt each other. I understood that a lot of this was going to be me having to make decisions on the fly, instinctual decisions on the fly. Do you jump in or do you let it play? Uh, and, and that that was going to be very challenging. And uh, that, on that, that point, was. On that point, did you struggle, first of all, with how to phrase the question to Donald Trump about the nine accusers, talking about groping and unwanted sexual attention, not to get too salacious? And also, when he kind of dismissed it by saying the stories have been largely debunked, did you think about challenging that? Well, in terms of the, of the phrasing of the question, uh, no, I didn't struggle with that at all. It was a straightforward question, and there was a right way to ask it. Uh, I also thought, because this was the beginning of a segment, so this is where each one is going to get two minutes, that, you, I, one, I couldn't interrupt there. That was there two minutes. And two, I needed to have a part of that question 
for Hillary Clinton so that she wouldn't just have two minutes to bash Trump. And so I put in the thing about, and he says that what you and your husband have done is worse. I will say, asking that in the moment with Melania Trump over this shoulder and Bill and Ch uh, Chelsea over this shoulder was harder than I thought it was going to be. It was like, oh my gosh, I'm asking this in front of these people. That, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty tough and grizzled, but there are moments when you sit there and go, I didn't quite know this was going to play out this way. Yeah, there's a human element to this. But let me ask you about that sequence. Why would so many different women from so many different circumstances over so many different years, why would they all in this last couple of weeks make up, you deny this, why would they all make up these stories? And since this is a question for both of you, Secretary Clinton, Mr. Trump says what your husband did and that you defended was even worse. Mr. Trump, you go first. So Hillary came back and used her time to talk about Donald Trump and the women and never answered the part of the question about Bill Clinton's misconduct or and her defense of his handling. Do you think in retrospect that you dropped the ball by not going back to that? And, and a asking Trump more? No, about asking it? Hillary Clinton to respond no, to the other part no, of the question. No, I thought, she you know, she, she, that was, this gets to the whole question of what the moderator's role is. You know, you, you ask a question and they handle it. And if Trump wanted to go back on her, it would have been very easy for him to do. I, 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 I also had a lot of material. There were a lot of scandals. I mean, I wanted to get to the Clinton Foundation. I wanted to get to the question in that same segment. Uh, about whether he would uh, honor the results, respect the results of the election. I wanted to talk about emails and didn't even get to that. Uh, so I, I was, if Trump wanted to do it, he could right. do it. And if he didn't, I was ready to move on. I had, to, I had more ammo. You have gotten a lot of praise for this debate in Las Vegas. Well deserved, in my view. Um, do you Thank think you. you changed some minds about the news side of Fox News, especially among those who might have thought there would be a conservative approach to this debate? Look, uh, I, I'd, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't feel I had a lot at stake, and that certainly added uh, to the pressure or started the pressure. But I also very much felt all along that I was not just representing myself, but I was representing this news organization. The fact that I was the first Fox moderator was a big deal, and a statement by something like the, the Commission on Presidential Debates, a blue ribbon panel, that they thought that Fox was a legitimate news organization. I was a legitimate journalist. And I very much, and I felt the, the, this keenly, wanted to represent the organization well and to say to any doubters, forget about it. We cover the news in as strong, and, and I know this will drive them nuts, as fair and balanced a way as anybody else does. We're out of time, but want to do it again in four years? Well, if you'd asked me, uh, it's funny, I've thought about it. If you'd asked me about two hours before, I would have said, lose my telephone number now. Yeah, 